So yeah, I don't mind um, some questions throughout. I, uh, that said, um, it'd be better if uh, any questions I'd like to have very lengthy answers, um, keep to the end. Um, but that said, most of the um, sections are quite self-explanatory in terms of um, where I'm going to talk about giving things. Um, some of you um, will know already the work of uh, Cryonix UK. Um, could I just have a quick chance, does anybody um, not already familiar with the work of Chronics UK, what it is that we actually do? Okay, in an absolute nutshell then, um, we are the standby um, stabilisation and transport organisation for Chronics emergencies in the UK. Um, we are currently operating in a volunteer based non-profit setup, um, as opposed to the um, more professional and um, uh, for-profit organisation in America, Suspended Animation. Um, that said, we've come a long way in our time, and especially quite a lot way further recently, and um, we're really hot on the heels of the Americans in terms of our capabilities. Um, our main goal, therefore, is to provide the best possible um, care of patients um, at the time of chronic suspension, that is to say, when they are legally pronounced um, dead in the hospital, medical science um, within the mainstream gives up, that's when we start work. Um, so, last year I gave a presentation here and um, I spoke on the current situation of Chronix UK at that time. Um, now, I gave a warts and all appraisal, there were a lot of um, problems that were discussed. Um, there was the good, bad and the ugly. Um, today, it's my intention to address what things have changed and hopefully update people regarding how the situation is now. So, uh, what's new? Um, a few main areas, so that if you do have any questions, you know if uh, I've already covered it or not. Um, Locations changed, equipment, knowledge, people, money, organisation, publicity, coverage. Location, first of all. Um, Shall we switch on the lights, maybe? Might be yeah, yes. probably help me. Oh, you can see that. Oops, bit better. Okay, so I um, don't have any extensive photographs of um, our old location, the new one, so I've taken uh, the best representative images I can find. Um, we used to be operating from the home of um, Alan and Sylvia Sinclair. Alan Sinclair is the president of Cryonics UK, uh, has been for a very long time, and uh, graciously provided us with space in his home to uh, conduct trainings and um, storage room out in the shed. It was not ideal, but it served the purpose for a while. Um, there is simply the kitchen where um, the perfusion training would generally take place, simply because it's where you can have a lot of uh, things out and it doesn't matter if things get wet. Um, nowadays we've moved up north to Sheffield, which is um, more central for the UK as a whole. Um, and additionally we now have a um, almost dedicated clinic room. I say almost dedicated, um, actually our new host's um, wife has an acupuncture clinic and um, she uses it when we're not using it. Um, essentially it's a very simple um, medical looking room with a lot of um, medical uh, instruments, most of our things locked away so that we don't frighten the acupuncture patients. Um, there you see um, the uh, air transport perfusion kit set up for um, training. That's our, that's our practice kit. Our, our real kit is sterile. Um, this is the equipment used for um, washing out a patient's blood and replacing it with uh, vitrification solutions or um, other preservatives depending on the uh, individual situation and the um, Maybe you just explain part of how, the how, what's going on there. So you're so washing the, blood out of the person who's just been declared medically dead? In a um, nutshell, there's a few steps to the process. Um, in an ideal situation, we have advance notice of the patient's death. That is to say, they're in hospital, they're in critical condition, and we get the call. Um, we stand by the patient's bedside, and we get a pronouncement of death as soon as possible. As soon as we have that pronouncement of death, we will um, 
insert a lot of medications, and we'll also begin cardiopulmonary support. This is just like CPR, but the goal is not to resuscitate, it's simply to continue the blood flowing so the medications will circulate and the blood clots will be less likely to form, especially with the medications that we're giving them. Um, the patient will be um, moved into an ice bath and the cold ice water will be circulated around using a device we uh, call a squid because it uh, has a lot of legs and it goes in the water, uh, which moves the ice around and means that the um, uh, ablation of heat is much swifter than it otherwise would be. Um, this can be done in the um, ambulance on the way from the hospital to wherever we're going to perform the perfusion, which in most cases is most likely going to be a mortuary. Um, at a pinch we could do it in the ambulance, but we'd much rather not. We'd much rather have the space um, of a mortuary. In any case, we'll be using an embalmer to do the encannulation, that is to say, um, opening the carotid and femoral arteries and um, uh, inserting the um, cannulation tubes that are required for uh, accessing the cardiovascular system. Um, this piece of kit here is used for um, removing the patient's blood and replacing it in, at the same time with um, other fluids. Now, the, what the other fluids are depends on the situation. Um, the um, initial washout can be done with a simple uh, organ preservation solution or a uh, washout fluid as um, can be acquired from the various cryonics organisations. Um, this won't stop um, a lot of damage, but it will stop some kinds. So why are you taking out the blood? Sorry. We're taking out the blood um, partly because it um, will simply cause a lot of freezing damage if the patient is still full of blood. Blood is um, you know, the kind of thing that is not going to help at all with um, cellular damage. Most people, um, when they think of cryonics, if they've not really looked into it, they'll often think, but what about the freezing damage? You know, if I put a strawberry in the fridge, uh, I mean in the freezer and I take it back out again and thaw it out, it's all a mush. Mm. Uh, that's because obviously water um, freezes and uh, in doing so, very mind your cells are mostly filled with water and in um, freezing will rupture the cell walls causing catastrophic damage throughout the body. Um, we aim to avoid this by um, vitrifying the body, that is to say making it um, into a glass-like state, um, sort of a solid liquid if you will. Um, by inserting what could be referred to as a medical grade antifreeze um, such that, that um, cellular damage due to freezing does not occur. Um, alas, I don't have um, pictures with me, but um, you can find them on the internet if you search for um, comparisons of frozen tissue compared to vitrified tissue, and the difference is very, very obvious. Um, and certainly the um, vitrified patients will um, doubtlessly have a much better chance of um, being fixed by some later emergent technology than the non-vitrified patients. Because we accept that it's going to be a complex um, cellular jigsaw that's going to take some pretty good nanotechnology to fix, but we like to make the job as easy as possible for, um, for that future technology. Um, here, this is uh, simply set up for training. Uh, we simply um, run a water through the system to um, demonstrate and um, practice its um, actual machinations. Um, you can see in the background there a little blue cloth that's dangling off, dangling off the um, table where the patient will be. Um, the patient simply being higher than the um, uh, kit for reasons of pressure differential. Um, it is um, problematic if there's too great a pressure differential. It is more problematic if the pressure is too high because then bad things start to happen um, in terms of um, things swelling um, and we want to avoid swelling at all costs. Um, We've additionally got a lot more space for the non-clinical items, that is to say the uh, ambulance, the dry ice shipper, which is essentially a um, very large insulated um, coffin with slight ventilation that can have a Ziegler container that's a metal coffin can, uh, generally used for repatriating bodies from country to country. Um, that will um, all live in um, the garage of our new location. All in all, it's um, basically a lot better to have some um, dedicated places instead of um, uh, 
uh, essentially making do with uh, somebody's kitchen. Uh, so that's one big change that has occurred, because uh, we were down south for a long time. 